you know, when you can go back to the point where you were a little kid and you can find that little kid and bring everything that's inside of you on paper, then you will have the most fun, but you also will be the most creative and the most balanced artist that you can be. I was actually asked if I could make a sketchbook tour for the sketchbook because I just showed a few pages of this in the last video. I also asked the community what people actually want to know because I find it very hard to talk about this stuff uh, while showing because yeah, it's kind of like, here's the drawing, <laughs> look at it, okay, next. <laughs> but I thought maybe an interesting theme could be a little bit the reason uh, why I chose to draw only with ink and also the what happens. So in 2022, when I met Kim Jung Ji, uh, that actually changed a little bit my um, perception for drawing. Before I was always drawing with pencil and um, I tried to make a beautiful drawing and I was erasing it and sometimes it worked, sometimes it doesn't. It was never really satisfying and I did not have the feeling that I would get better or got really good. By the way, just uh, teaching stuff. So every time I try to teach people and I also work on my online course at the moment, um, every time I try to teach and make new exercises, I basically have to write and draw them out. It's just better for making videos. So basically that changed something in me, which um, was the perception and also the satisfaction of these drawings. Can I actually draw from imagination? No, I couldn't. And so it was a very painful process. My first step was going completely into ink. So no pencil drawing anymore, which also makes you first realize, okay, I have to pre-think every time I make a drawing. Every time I want to do something, I have to be aware what is actually the thing I want to do. And I think that process helps really a lot on getting the right mindset. Focus more on what you draw and you appreciate also more the time you spend while drawing. So anytime you sit down for drawing, you do not doodle. That was what I was doing, was doodling. I would now really taking time and thinking, what is it that I want to draw? How do I want to draw it? And also I can't erase. When I make a mistake, I just make a mistake. And I think that is a very good thing to have in terms of habit if you want to improve the drawings. So first you just have to let go. And I filled two or three sketchbooks only with ink. Um, I also have sketchbook videos on the channel, but I also started to appreciate this process and also kind of like just accept that this is now part of my process. So anytime I would kind of like think about a pose or think about something I want to draw, I would just draw it before, like a planning, like a little thumbnail, like we would do in production. And then I would draw it again, you know, but then trying to be focused on that specific moment when I draw stuff. For the people who have seen the, the um, drawing schedule videos, that kind of like made the schedule coming together. Anytime I would try to learn something, I would always focus on drawing it from my own imagination. My figure drawing, for example, is not good enough. What can I do in order to get it better, right? Do I actually really know? And it's a very interesting approach. I often see in my students when I teach them, all of them, they can copy, all of them, they can see something and they can draw it and they have very good hard skills. But when I say, okay, now draw a figure from imagination and they draw it and it looks completely off or it com looks completely far away from what the reference is looking like, there you actually see what you know and what you don't know. And what we want to do in the learning process, actually, we want to fill those gaps, those information gaps. It's in the beginning, it's a very painful process, but it's a good process. It's the right process because it shows you, okay, I have problems with faces, I have problems with hands so where is the information gap I'm missing what do I miss and then you fill that up I do not regret going in with ink and starting that yeah I really appreciate just doing these ink drawings I also learned a ton about efficiency mark making you also start to look into your artist that you really like and try to understand okay why do someone makes a little dot at a certain point does it communicate form does it communicate uh, material reflectivity what, what does it do actually, right? What does a silhouette do? And I really also started to understand really the core relationship between form and shape. Since I already was a professional, I understood that there is this concept and there's this understanding, but I need to understand it myself 100% in order to teach it to someone. And I think I'm pretty good at this, getting these drawings from imagination out. You know, this moment when you feel like, ah, I have to work out, I have to go into the gym or do something because I haven't moved. And then you really bust your ass and you go into the gym and, and it's maybe a super painful workout and you're really exhausted, but afterwards you feel good. And that's the kind of like same thing with busting your butt on getting into drawing from imagination because in the beginning it's super painful. 
And it was painful for a year, I would say, at least. The more you do it, the better you get and the easier it becomes. Then you try to look for the next challenge. How can I make this interesting? I just love this feeling of texture here, you know? It was super repetitive to draw this. I learned so much about efficiency and, and I don't want to imagine how they built these because that really takes a lot of time, probably. I just need a certain shape and I need a certain indication to uh, replicate this. And uh, you can use this for everything, right? Also for nature, for environments, for backgrounds and all that. Yeah, the infamous wrong ink I bought. It's a Pelican Brilliant Brown. Um, it's a really nice ink. It's actually, it looks more like red, but I really like the tone. I also used like a feathered pen for this, you know, like a very hard, which it's like scratching on the paper. I stayed at my parents' place at summer to uh, babysit their cat when they were on vacation. And my mom had these, um, tip which which is very soft and has a lot of ink flow but i was kind of like just experiment with the colors and it was very uh, satisfying to do also just testing every time i buy new stuff kind of like testing how thick what is the right thickness here um, i bought some pens and i found like the one 0.1 was kind of like perfect for me i think what's important especially when you want to be free as an artist and someone who's drawing a lot moments in your life because no one else sees life and the world around you like you. You only see it in your own way. And if you find a way to display that, then you can be a very unique artist, I think. Because no one else can be you. Only you can be you. Uh, this is by Nico uh, in, in Paris also. Uh, Nico is really cool. Appreciate the time with him. He's super, super chill. And he made this really cool drawing. When you achieve a certain um, confidence in drawing from imagination, this is something that becomes then very cool because it's more like a diary entry. Uh, we went to a basketball game that <laughs> do not really look like me, but looks more like a crack version of me. We went to a basketball game and I was kind of like thinking about the poses of the players, what would they do and stuff. And when I drew it from my imagination, I feel like, oh wow, I actually leveled up a bit more because I got more confidence also in just using full shapes and stuff and seeing poses of people and how that would behave and that was really really cool or like little things you would start to do you know like someone observing how would they use their toes going through grass and stuff that's really really cool this is a page where i would let myself go i would just draw random stuff and just kind of like put this together you know and the thing is what i believe what is a big big challenge and you have to get aware of is every time you draw you think about so many things at the same time. You think about form, you think about perspective, you think about anatomy, and then you worry about, oh, do I get the face right? Do I get the hand right? Do I get the anatomy right? But the problem is you are not relaxed enough. And when you are not relaxed, you cannot be really creative. You need to get to the state of mind where you just draw, let yourself go, but you're confident enough in what is it what you do. And I think you have to double check, you know? You have to kind of like check back in between. What is it the story I want to tell? And sometimes it just comes in the back. I started to draw frogs, but I had the idea for this frog farmer with all the little frogs everywhere. And then I tried to imagine him having lunch and I, I tried different ink medium and stuff. So it, sometimes it's more of a random process, but it comes together, you know? This, I think there's also still the same red ink. That was also a very interesting when I start really experiment more with watercolor. Sometimes you have good things, sometimes you have lesser good things. Sometimes you just, you kind of like, oh, what do I do here? And then you have these pages, you know? But back in the day, I would kind of like beat myself up for these pages, like, oh, I just messed up the sketchbook. But uh, I think it's important that you get these sketchbooks, pages where you try things, where you have an idea, where you have a concept and you just try that concept. And if it, and you have never a guarantee that this also works. The important part is that you have fun. And if it's just something where you say, okay, I need to learn anatomy. How can I make anatomy? Learning fun for me, find a way, tell a story, look for style, look how your favorite artist is solving the same problem that you try to solve. And then you make a little 30 minute study by that artist in between and then you go back to your study again. I also believe that the way you see drawing or the way you perceive learning art changes over time. I think someone wrote in the comments I could talk about how my approach and my perception changed over the years and I think the person said like the last 10 years I think I do not even draw for 10 years now. I wasn't the kid who was drawing in school or whatnot. I would not touch a pen. Art wasn't interesting for me at all. You can see how life can change and also in a positive way. Art completely changed my life, gave me the possibility to live my life, how I'm living it today and 
that I am able to teach people this and help them to achieve their goals, achieve their dreams. It's so rewarding. But also being creative myself. Would not consider back then myself a creative person. This is a page I drew at midnight. So I would kind of like draw all day. And then sometimes you are so in the zone. I just talked with my mom about that a few days ago. Sometimes you're so much in the zone and you cannot stop. But it's dangerous because when you drew four hours and then you sit down at uh, 11 p.m. and you draw again for three, four hours until 2 a.m. in the morning and you feel like, oh, damn it, I'm, I'm going to be wrecked on the next day because not only your sleeping schedule is off, but also it's kind of like, um, <laughs> it's kind of like this, uh, I, I kind of like don't feel like drawing on the next day when I draw so excessively on one day. It's different from production, obviously. When you work somewhere, Monday to Friday, you go there and you, you have to do it because of your, your job, right? Stuff for my brother. I think I spoke about it in another video also as well. And I like to get stupid, you know, thinking about a woman ordering a sex robot or whatever, and it's not working, she's calling the hotline. It's the most embarrassing moment, maybe, or not. Ugly pages, but good ugly pages. A lot of thinking, this is all thinking thinking and trying. The most important thing in this whole process is that you always try to move forward. And it's okay. It's okay if you if you come back to drawing and then everything's hard in the beginning, but muscle mind memory really works for you. What I also find very interesting is that you have this repetitive theme when you draw from imagination because you will realize you will kind of like draw certain things over and over. I think it has to do a little bit with comfort zone, but also with the things you're just interested in. And also, I think for how I approach this sketchbook here, I actually started on the back side. I wanted to make everything nice in the beginning, but then I was kind of like bouncing back and forth. And then, yeah, I was just starting to add things. I actually really like this one. I want to put this on a t-shirt. <laughs> it looks really cool. The frog um, splitting the, the fly in half. Drawing the sketchbook, I also was drawing on paper since I do a lot of uh, work now on single sheets. Basically also the Hahnemühle one in a smaller format. Also it takes ink from the ink pen very, very nicely. Those pages would be basically now these warm up pages, you know. Sometimes I also like to draw on post-its. I'm a post-it person, so all my thoughts, I always kind of like do that. I have this from studying industrial design because we would always use post-its for working. This one also in another video. Again, experiments, drawing in a certain anime style, seeing like How's the ratio and whatnot. Also warm-up drawing in the morning. Kind of like drawing again something that I have drawn before. It's kind of like the other guy, but trying with uh, different things. Just seeing if it works or not. And it did not, but it's fine. It's actually a commission uh, I haven't sent out yet. Learning anatomy, making fun for you, bringing in the combination of drawing from imagination. Drawing something in, in the morning just to get get warm 30 minutes or an hour, something in between. Sometimes you have things that uh, surprisingly come out good and you like and then it, you kind of like save it. So I think that's why it's so important that you start on doing that. If it works for me, it does not necessarily need to work for you. I want to say it's without a quality stamp. It works because it makes me happy. The older you get, the more you start to focus on happiness. Even if someone comes and says, that's a really nice drawing, that doesn't give me so much anymore as it, as it was like five years ago when I was still trying to hustle in to a certain mode. I need to have the satisfaction of drawing and I need to feel well after this drawing. And it does, sometimes planning images, you know, planning compositions. Yeah, more warm-up stuff, just doodling around. I would actually never show this somewhere. It's not great, it's not amazing. It's just thinking about moments. A lot of failure here, but good failure teaches you a lot. This is actually a very beautiful word. It's uh, serendipity, or in German it's serendipität. Basically to find something beautiful in something unexpected. And I really like the word. Skeletons from imagination. I realize, well, now I can start to tell stories and I can do technically illustrations and draw skeletons as I want and make skeleton zombies. And I love this stuff and it's so cool and so much fun. So it was kind of like the serendipity in that. I don't draw every day um, these days because I can't. I'm so busy with making an online class and teaching people. I have my mentorship students, um, I'm very busy. But sometimes I also need to take breaks because I have the tendency to work too much. Can't draw every day, but I try to make it part of my life. Drawing is part of my life. This realization, the most valuable re realization I had since I started with drawing from imagination. Without challenging myself, trying to draw from imagination, I would not have this realization. You know, when you can go back to the point where you were a little kid and you can find that little kid and bring 
everything that's inside of you on paper, then you will have the most fun, but you also will be the most creative and the most balanced artist that you can be. So I hope this video was uh, interesting in any form. Um, please make sure to like and subscribe to support this channel and to support any future videos. I wish you an awesome day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.